You probably would not have heard this before. Listen to this message for the rejuvenation of your spirit. Because they knew secrets that we don't know today. It was that realm that Moses entered on Sinai when he descended. The Bible says his face began to shine. That was when Moses stopped being a mortal. Because when Paul came to define who Moses was, in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 5, he called Moses the law. He said when Moses is read. So when you read Genesis, Leviticus, you are reading Moses. Moses was no longer a mortal. And in the realm of glory, he couldn't die. At 120, he said his sight was not dim. Neither was his strength abated. In fact, God had to devise a technology of killing Moses. That was why Moses died in secret. Because he entered a suspended reality. His molecular structure was altered by glory. At that realm, when Moses talks, he's a God. But the problem with that realm is that if you sin, you can't be forgiven. God can remove the iniquity from you, but you will face the penalty. And when Moses violated God, he says, speak to the rock. And Moses did not know that at this level, he was doing business among gods. Because the rock he said he should speak to was Christ. Because God had brought him. You know, the Bible said in Isaiah 53 that he pleased God to bruise him. So what God did was that instead of bruising Jesus, he gave Moses the right to do it. Now we have brought you to the name of God. Participate in the economy of the immortals. Bruise the Christ, but only use words. And Moses showed up and said the Israelite offended him and he struck the rock. Ah, you have dead. You don't know that the rock that traveled between the wilderness is not a stone, it's Christ. And because you have erred, you can't be forgiven. And so when they were about to enter the promised land, he told Moses, go and bless the children of Israel. You will see it, but you won't enter. And when Moses wanted to pray, he said, don't pray to me. Because if you pray, your judgment will be worse. It will provoke anger. So don't pray. You have come into the company of immortals and you don't know that the code of conduct here is righteousness you don't see in here we will kill you and when Moses went down Moses be that was all the secrets Moses had he didn't say them he kept them in himself in his belly because he wanted to enter the promised land with him but when he discovered he won't make it to the promised land he stood like a god and he began to talk the destiny of Israel and one of the things he saw he said I saw the Lord descending from Mount Paran and I saw the Holy One he was saying things that will happen in the battle of Armageddon because Moses had journeyed out of time to the end of time so he knew the beginning is the same Moses that said in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth because when he entered the league of God they showed him so those things the secrets of the earth where God stood when he said light appear Moses saw it he was no longer immortal. Did you not read about Paul? He said, I know a man many years ago. Whether he was in the body or in the flesh, I can't tell. He said, that man was carried to the third heaven. And he said, the man was carried to paradise. And he saw things that were unlawful to be uttered among men. And I, the question I ask is, if those things are unlawful to be uttered among men, how did you hear it? That means the realm he entered, he was no longer immortal. He had become an immortal being because the word immortal means without corruption. So you can't allow iniquity to enter you anymore. And so when God judged Moses, he came and spoke to Israel. It was Moses that wrote the foundation of that civilization. He taught them secrets. He knew so much about God. When God's anger fell upon Israel and in one day, 23,000 people died, Moses told Aaron, quickly, Take the golden censer and run and stand between the people and God. When he sees the incense, he will stop. He knew what to do to restrain God. That was the level of secret that the man entered. Stand between the people, no matter how angry he is, when he sees the incense. Because the prayers of the saints, he said they are sent to heaven as others. And they are stored in golden vials. Those are fragrances. So when God perceived those fragrances, his anger will dissipate. And that was how Moses saved Israel. A whole tribe would have been swallowed up. He knew the secrets of Abba. 
In fact, in Exodus 32, when God was angry, he said, these are his stiff-necked people. I will destroy them and start a new generation with you. He said, far be it from you. He said, repent of these things. How do you want the nations to hear? Is that a man talking? Is the realm of laws. When you, when you perfect holiness, when you perfect righteousness, then the powers of the ages to come, they are committed to you. At that level, your wars are no longer for communication. Even your utterances will be withdrawn. Because when you speak, beyond communication, you will create. Because there was a place God stood and said, let the heavens and the earth appear. It's a realm. It's the realm of righteousness. Where men stand as God stands. The powers that we should wield, they are wrapped in mysteries. But we don't know the secrets of the kingdom. We are quoting scriptures and speaking in capital letter tongues. And the demons are manipulating men and they are oppressing the body. They are assaulting the body, molesting the body. Because we have negated the things that give us authority in the realms eternal. And God told him, he said, ascend the mountain of Nebo. Climb up to the mountain called Abarim. He said, die there. <laughs> Imagine you come to fellowship with God and God say, go and climb so some mountain and die. And you can't pray and say, have mercy. Meanwhile, this was the same man that God said himself can't resist their prayer. In Jeremiah 15 verse 1, he said on this matter, if Samuel and Moses pray, because the height they entered in priesthood, they were the most ranking intercessors until Jesus came. No intercessor in scripture had that rank. There are some intercessors that were ranked in scriptures. The first guys that were ranked in the corridor of intercession were Daniel and the likes of Ezekiel. He said if they pray for a city, they will save themselves. But they can't save the city. But when it came to Moses and, and Samuel, their level of intercessory power was different. But on this matter, he said, you can't pray to me. Go and die. And Moses carried himself and went and died. <laughs> See why the devil can allow you fornicate and still heal the sick. Because that's mundane. The real powers in the spirit, they are beyond healing. They are men that can speak to the wind. And say, let the east wind come. And fill the bodies. And a great army can rise. For such powers, it's not a gift. It is to walk in the realm of righteousness. Dimensions that are hollow. Only mortals can wield them. And so the devil has no problem with you prophesying. Add fornication to it. Because he knows that with your prophecy, he will still take the city. You can have congregation. You can have a large member. But the city belongs to him. Because princes don't fight for men. They fight for territories. It's demons that fight for men. And so when princes come, they are contending for the city. And we will never have the power to take the city until we know the way of righteousness. That's why no man can stand up and banish the sons of the bondwoman. But in the days of Samuel, he says, so long as Samuel lived, he said the hand of God was perpetually against the Philistine. Samuel didn't need to pray. So long as he was breathing, no bandit can come close to Zion. Because if you try it, you will be converted. Did you not read about Saul? When he came to arrest Samuel, the moment he touched the borders of Nioth in Ramah, the Bible said he prophesied naked from night until morning because the hand of God was a defense. But check those men. The power they wielded was not an anointing. It was called righteousness. When Samuel was old, he stood before Israel. He said, let one of you accuse me. Let one man, one, I've never taken a lamb from you. I've never robbed any of you. I've never withheld anything from you. Let one man accuse me. 